Hey, this is Brad Bertelli, the creator for the Keys History and Discovery Center. Good morning and welcome back for our Tuesday exploration of the, our uh, Discovery Center, our, our museum here in Isla Mirada. And um, if you have questions, we are one person down on the uh, manning of questions, so um, please feel, feel free to type them in and I'll get back to you um, after I uh, get back to my, to my desk. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about Rock Harbor. I know we've covered this subject a, l a couple times, um, but this is a kind of a new, when we talk about the history of the Florida Keys, it's, you know, you can't, you know, there's, there's Key West, there's the Middle Keys, there's the Upper Keys, but all of the Keys really are very much connected. And in that vein, a lot of the exhibits at the, at the facility here, the more time you spend with them, the more time, you, the, the more you'll see that the exhibits become connected as well. A great example of this, we talked uh, several weeks ago um, about uh, Captain Ben Baker when we were talking about wrecking and piracy in, our, uh, in, our, uh, uh, in an earlier exhibit. And Ben Baker was one of the very first, the very first um, inhabitants or, 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 or uh, de denizens of Rock Harbor. And um, now Rock Harbor is an interesting kind of location. It doesn't mean a whole lot today. There are some uh, businesses that still advertise as being Rock Harbor, but Rock Harbor, except for a lone, uh, a lone uh, sign put up by the state where they misspelled Harbor, um, <laughs> it's H A R B O R, and they use the the European spelling H A H A R B O U R, but that's the only really marker that that kind of shows where Rock Harbor is, where Rock Harbor was, and in modern in, in modern you know uh, time. What we, when we talk about Rock Harbor, we're talking really about mile marker 97, mile marker 98, 99, 100, kind of that, that area, that middle area of Key Largo. Now back, as you go back to Captain Ben Baker, he, in, in, 18, in the 18, early 1860s, late 1850s, he was a, um, he was a wrecker living down in Key West, uh, operate, operating the uh, Baker Wrecking Company. And he, as many wreckers did, had a side job, and his side job was pineapples. And he sailed to Cuba and got thousands of suckers and slips, which, which are the baby pineapples that grow out of the, out of the top of a, of a pineapple, and brought them to a clearing on Key Largo, both Key Largo and Plantation Key, but we're gonna concentrate on Key Largo, um, and cleared some land there with, with, with his family, his sons, and they planted the very first, what is thought to be the first commercial a pineapple plantation. And this would be in the area of mile marker 98. Um, so this is kind of, he kind of sets the tone for people coming to that area of Key Largo. In fact, and when we talk about Key Largo and the history of, of the name Key Largo and where it was on the island, it really comes down to post office. It's a really a postal story. And interestingly enough, Ben Baker, who was you know, the director from Key West, planted pineapples, also became the first postmaster of of Key Largo um, when he opened uh, post office Cayo Largo. Uh, this was in 1870 and at that time he um, on the postal application was going to uh, give service to about 17 families. The population of Key Largo in, in, then at that point would have been really everything north of Tavernier or the Planter area. Everything north of basically mile marker 90, 91 in that, in that kind of area. Um, north to all, all all the rest of Key Largo. And so his, his first postal, post office that, that served 17 families, 60 people living up there, really lasted only a short period of time for about a year before it closed down. Now there is a, a long history of other post office coming on, on the island. At one point there was, uh, there was the uh, Planner post office, there was the Tavernier post office, there was the Rock Harbor post office, there was the Key Largo post office, but also the Jewfish post office. And the Jewfish post office was kind of there at Jewfish Creek Bridge where the train first came on down with what's today the 18 mile stretch and comes over, um, well, came across the bridge. They, today we drive over the, the, the Jewfish Creek Bridge, but in those days it was a, it was a swing bridge, so you just kind of drove, uh, the train kind of rolled right across. But there was a post office there for a brief time called Jewfish Creek po or Jewfish Post Office. Now, from that point, there was Jewfish, there was Key Largo, there was Rock Harbor and Tavernier. We're talking 1910, 1912, 1915, this area. Now, after the 1935 Labor Day hurricane, 
uh, the Key Largo post office is kind of done away with and, and it goes away. And from this point forward, Rock Harbor is really all of Key Largo from Tavernier north on, Key, north, north on, on the island. Now that would change again, and we've, we've talked about this a couple times, when Key Largo, the movie comes to town and it, 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 it becomes you know, a, a big national hit and people want their postcards to be stamped or Key Largo, but there is no post office that can stamp something Key Largo. There is the post office that, that can stamp a letter or a postcard Rock Harbor, but that wasn't, you know, that wasn't fun. They wanted something memorable to send home to their families. And there was a petition passed around the community. There was a, uh, I think it was signed like 400, 400 residents. And the name in 1951-52 in, in uh, uh, was changed officially from Rock Harbor to Key Largo. And at this point, at this, who's in that elevator? And at this point, um, the name Rock Harbor starts to, starts to disappear from, from the record books. And again, there are still some, uh, some, uh, some businesses are still referred to Rock Harbor in, in, in their names. But as far as a location, kind of a region, there became uh, really Rock, Key Largo, Florida, and then Tavernier, Florida, both on the, on the island of Key Largo. Now we're going to talk about Rock Harbor in much more detail tomorrow night at five o'clock. We'll be hosting a, a webinar from our Community Views series. And we're going to, I'm going to uh, show a lot of old slides, tell some great old stories um, and, and a lot of history about the village of, of, uh, of Rock Harbor as, as it developed. Uh, and we're gonna talk, you know, in the 19, 1910, 19 to 1952, basically kind of that area, talking about some of the businesses, some of the, of the events. Um, I've, I've been doing a lot, of, a lot of looking and researching. I found a great, uh, uh, we've talked about the Garrett Observation Tower, um, which is, was at mile marker 98. Um, that was a, a post office, it was a, hot, it was a hotel. And for the longest time, I always assumed that he, I know there was a post office there, that he was the, post, the postmaster, but really the, post, the position of postmaster was all uh, women all, all held these for, for decades. And it was actually his wife was the postmaster at, the, uh, at that early version of the Rock Harbor um, post office. And he was a deputy sheriff. And there's a, an article that, that was printed on August 7th, 1933, talking about because things, you know, there's always some drama going on no matter what, what decade, decades you're in. And there was a local family who was issuing threats against Garrett and, and his family. So he called down to Key West and told the, the, the sheriff, you know, there's a, I would like you to handle this because our family, there's a family up here who's threatening us and we would like you to come, to come handle it. And so on August 7th, 1933, the sheriff, uh, I think left a day before or a day after, um, was coming up to handle this personally to take care of uh, whatever threat. And I didn't, didn't find the aftermath of what happened or, or who was saying what, but interesting. There's just, the more, the more you dig, and I've, have, I'm in the great position of being able to you know, spend my time digging and looking for all these great things, and all these great stories and anecdotes and learning this history so we can bring it to the community, so we can bring it to our visitors, and uh, so they can get a better appreciation of all the really great history that can be found here in, in the Florida Keys. And the more time you spend learning about this, about this stuff, about the history and, and experiencing all the wonder of, of, of the island chain as a whole, it really is connected. There is, it really is one, one the Florida Keys are, are, one, are, are one group and then there's you know, some great, you know, great uh, tangents and offshoots of history, but really they all come down to, um, to one really big family, which is always really interesting and it's a great f way for me to, to kind of connect the stories and tell them, and which is what I get to do for a living, which is really, a cool thing for me. <laughs> so tomorrow night, yeah, what? Yes, yeah, uh, tomorrow, so tomorrow night um, from five o'clock till six o'clock, we'll be doing the Rock Harbor version of our community views. Uh, you can find a link on our Facebook page um, that we posted tomorrow morning that you can follow to, to, to sign up for the webinar, or you can go to our, 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 our webpage, keysdiscovery.com, virtual program, backslash virtual programming, and find the link there. Um, it's a great, it's gonna be a great, uh, a, a great, a great show of pictures, a great show of stories, a lot of fun, a lot of fun things to tell. I learned some great new things. I'm looking forward to sharing those uh, with the community and for everyone who, uh, who, who tunes in to watch. 
Oh, and uh, yes, we, uh, we are reopened. We're open uh, Wednesday through Sundays from 10 to 5. Um, social distancing in, inside the facility. We have, I don't know if you can see all the, all the tape. I can see that. <laughs> Jill's behind the camera giving me, giving me signs of things to say. <laughs> Let me get to it, I'll get to it. <laughs> um, we have the tape on the floor to kind of shows you, you know, how far six feet is. Um, masks are necessary. Uh, it, it, it's part of life here in the Florida Keys, in the state of Florida, uh, in, in the country right now. Um, so those are things to, to help protect us all, so we're going to have to keep aware of that. But, there, but you can still come in uh, 10 to 5, Wednesday through Sunday. Um, lots of great artifacts to see, large, lots of great uh, uh, pictures, old pictures, lots of great stories to learn, and there's just so much. And the more time you spend in here and you're kind of looking around, you will begin to pick up on these threads that really connect one exhibit to the next, because it really is just one large, great big story that, uh, that we're thrilled to be able to bring to our, our community. So um, well, I will see you tomorrow night, um, five o'clock for Community Views, and then on Friday, if we have Field Trip Fridays, where we're going to do kind of a, a something different that not everyone will be able to see. We were fortunate enough uh, a couple years ago when the Plantation Key School uh, was being redesigned to help and add some um, some history to that to the school, and we're going to take a peek inside the school, which is incredible. We've talked a lot about the old schools, the, these one-room schools with no air conditioning and mosquitoes, and um, we're going to go visit a really modern super tech school that we had a little part uh, of of helping to design um, for some of the uh, the, the uh, exhibits there in, in, inside the school. So we're really excited to visit there on Friday. It'll be air conditioning, so our phone won't melt out, and. Uh, and, and Jill won't melt either. So um, in the meantime, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow and Friday and uh, have a great day and thanks so much.